All right, folks. Um, welcome back. So, so we've been talking about very simple problems so far, like the very simple, uh, like the domains, very simple variables, and also very simple. Still, like the considering this is very simple constraints. Um, it could be more complicated if you play Sudoku. So, it it, it could be like. Um, you're playing against computer, the Sudoku. Um, um, in that case, you, you already probably you know that already. Um, the Sudoku, there will be like the a board of like a lot of squares. Some of the squares are filled with some numbers. So the idea is uh, like the uh, none of the numbers would be repeated on the um, you know on the same row or same column. And um, so there, there could be like the uh, the domains could be one to nine, and uh, you can um, you can consider like the 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 first constraint. None of the or like the values in a single column could be similar. That means all are different. All the values here in the, in the, this column are different. And similarly, like the none of the values in a single row would be similar. That means nine of the values all are different in in this in this single row. And also, in in each of the square, there's a nine squares, a smaller uh, like that. This is the, uh, uh, the the largest square is the entire board. Smallest square is the this square where the numbers are, and there's a medium square. Uh, that consist uh, three by three matrix of the square. Um, none of the like the numbers inside that particular uh, square uh, region could be similar. So all are different. So three different uh, constraints you can put there, and you know that's only three different constraints can can help you to build a really strong algorithm. Is an artificial intelligence algorithm that can. Um, that can beat you. Um, you cannot beat that particular uh, AI algorithm that you built yourself um, to solve the Sudoku problem. So, um, or you can you can think other other ways like that. You can have a bunch of pairwise inequality constraints. So I'm I'm not going to talk about everything in this course. So definitely something if you are interested in going further study, you can uh, consider studying the. All right, so there, there's a varieties of uh, like the constraints, uh, satisfaction problems and constraints. Uh, first of all, we talked about uh, the unary constraints um, that has uh, one um, variable and one value relation. That is unary constraint. And if there is uh, two variables involved, that is binary concern, constraints. And uh, it could be higher order like that, uh, cryptarithmetic uh, columns constraints or uh, like the previously we, we talked about um, this this way there is you can see the three constraints out there um, and many more so normally we prefer like the very soft constraints like um, uh, something is better than something something is not equal something that's 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 the preferences if you're able to find those uh, start with that or if you can find uh, really complex uh, like the constraints you need to divide them into simpler version so uh, that's, the, that's the logic. So um, how are you gonna solve that? We, 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 so far we talked about like the how to formulate the problem. You can take a look there. We, we talked about formulation one, formulation two. So we, we did not talk about how to solve that. So let's, let's talk about how to solve uh, such, such problem. So um, like the very, very standard, like the um, standard solution could be you start with the empty, like that, you put no values to any variables. Suppose you have some va variables A, B, C, D. You start with all nothing, then you put A as zero and see what the possible ways of B, C, and D. Then you choose B something that's not violating the constraints, maybe two, and choose something, and so on. You can move forward. That's just that's a, a very uh, simpler way. So. At the very first time you consider everything empty, that is uh, like the initial state. Initial state may be empty, maybe not. 
it's totally depending on the players. If you are the player two, probably you have to start from something that player one assigned to you. And uh, there could be a successor function. Uh, you remember the successor function from previous lectures, like that you assign a value to an unassigned variables. Definitely you already assigned a values to A, definitely consider only those values, those variables, those are not being assigned any values yet. And the goal test, the goal test would be the current assignment is complete and satisfies all constraints. So that's the goal test. So whatever you put the numbers, you check that all the constraints are there or not. Like the, if it is a four queen problem, you check that whether the queens that you assigned in the four by four chessboard, they are fighting each other or not. So you can keep changing and changing and until you reach the goal. Like the, the goal test is satisfies all the constraints. Very, very standard search. So you, you can solve like that a crypto, uh, crypto arithmetic puzzle. Uh, sorry for my pronunciation. So um, very simple way, just run some for loops, right? We need to find the value of AFT U W R O. So run that, run some like the, we start from F from zero to nine, then T zero to nine and so on, everything then for, and we check that for all constraints like that, this is implicit constraints. And we said, check that explicit constraints, everything we check that done. And actually it, 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 it is pretty like the uh, still efficient. And it is sometimes it's called brute force. Um, brute force, you brutally force the problem to be solved using the maximum possible, uh, like the, the iterations. So if you have uh, n different variables, um, you have to go for n iterations. So, and uh, if, you, if you have uh, like the number of depth, uh, if, if, if the depth like the, you go D then, uh, maybe you have to do go for order of d power n. So uh, we, we're going to talk about more, more details about that. So um, there could be um, some version variations as well, like the order of n d power n. So, um, and if it is a two, uh, like the binary problem, it could be order of n d squared. So we are going to talk about in a while. So bear with me. But you, you cannot do that actually. So for all kind of problems um, like that. For for n queen problem, if we have four by four uh, chessboard, maybe it would take uh, millions of iterations. Um, it's, it's not like that. You have four by four matrix. It's it's it's, it's all about how many uh, options you have, like how many combinations you have. Um, that's uh, extremely tricky. So and the combinations, the the much the combinations you have, the more uh, the spaces you need, the more iterations you need. So we, we need to do, we need to do improve the search problem. So the first thing is called backtracking. Backtracking is extremely simple. We have already learned backtracking in the uh, DFS and BFS where we checked one node. And if you see that it's not satisfying our goal, it's failing the goal test. We are returning to the parent node. So, Similar like that, this is a, a, the similar like the backtracking problem. It's, it's almost similar. Uh, one is the problem, uh, addition is you're, uh, you're adding the constraints. So you're not only the testing the goal, whether you reach the final goal, you're also trying to satisfy the constraints. So that's the difference uh, between the uh, any kind of uh, informed or uninformed search we, we talked about before. So the idea one is of the backtracking um, is very simple. You check one variable at a time. So here you can take a look there like the, the Western Australia is red, then Northern territory is green. Okay, let's, let's, let's go back a little bit. So. If you consider this for loop, so 
if you build similar like this, like the four, Western Australia, the option is red, green, blue. Then inside there's another for loop, Northern Territory, and the option is again, red, green, blue. What will be happen? One point you will have Western Australia as red and Northern Territory as green. And again, you do all the computation, all the iterations, iterations, and there will be another scenario where Northern Territory would be green and Western Australia would be red. So th th these are similar thing, right? The only thing is we consider here, the Western Australia, the Northern Territory, maybe it could be, uh, maybe it could be vice versa, maybe one iterations. Um, if, if that is happening, it's, we consider both are actually the same. So we would like to check that whether this particular condition has been already checked or not. So th that, that exactly is doing here. Like the very first idea is, we check one, uh, one variable and we check that whether the order, the ordering is uh, for now, maybe the Western Australia is red and uh, Northern Territory is green. It is same as Northern Territory green, then Western Australia is red. So both are same. So one of the conditions is met, the other should be satisfied as well. So we do not need to visit those again. So um, this is something, um, the very first idea of the backtracking. The second idea is check the constraints as you go. So as you choose like the Western Australia and you have a couple of options for Northern, Northern Territory like the green or uh, if you choose Western Australia red, you have options uh, like that. If you choose Western Australia as red, then you have options of Northern Territory as red, green and blue. So the red, if you choose red, then red chance is gone because these are adjacent, just like the, the, uh, the map coloring thing. So it is gone. So now you have two options, green or blue. So you check that if these two options, both of the options are constraints, or there's, there's are actually maintaining the constraints or not. Uh, yes, if you choose red, it could be blue, it could be green. And if you choose red, then you can choose blue. So both can stay there. So that means as you choose some red for Western Australia, you check that all the possible conditions of the other variables would maintain the constraints or not. Um, that's something, it, it will be more clear uh, when we see the example. So it's, it's something is called incremental goal test. So we're, we're gonna see in a while. So um, here uh, is a very, very simple, but extremely clear example. So you can consider we have variables A, B, C, they have domains one to three and some constraints. A must be greater than B, B cannot be equals to C and A cannot be equals to C. Three constraints, very simple thing. Three constraints, three domains and three variables. So we have variables um, A, B, C. We have domains. Domains could be Z one, two, three. And uh, constraints we have C1, C2, C3. So let's, let's do the back trick. What's, what's the back trick is doing? Um, if you choose one, a equals to one. First, let's let's start with the order. Let's start with this. this there is another problem is called order order filtering. So we're going to talk about uh, in a while. All it is doing just like considering the order. So let's consider the order. The first order is the, the a equals to one. We choose a equals to one. That's fine. What could be the b? B equals to one. Let's choose the B equals to one. Now check that the constraint is satisfied or not. So you remember in the, in the previous lecture, so we must check the constraints as you go. And we must 
check one variable at a time. So we choose one variable at a time that is a equals to one, done, the variable is done. Then now we consider another variable at a time, b equals to one. If we check that b equals to one and the goal test of this particular state, the goal test, we test the goal and we see that b equals to one, this, this violates, like a must be greater than b, but it's not. So a is one, b equals to one, it, it, it violated. So it violated. We check the test, the constraint test, it's violated. So once it's, it violated, just like the DFS, we cut that and we do the backtracking. We move in here. We do the backtracking. That is called backtracking. So we try to move forward with the, uh, with the uh, order, like the alphabetic order or number order and we failed and we backtrack. So now we backtrack, we start to the root and we start with the a equals to one. Now we choose b equals to the next one, two. And if we choose two, the goal test also fails because again, a must be greater than b. And also similar like the a equals to one, b equals to three, and also goal test fails everything's gone. So this is gone, this is gone, this is gone. We cannot choose, if you choose A equals to one, we cannot choose any of the B. So that means actually we need to cut that as well. So we need to backtrack to the starting point. The starting point when we choose A equals to one, so now we go to start and now we choose A equals to two. We do the backtracking, the second one. Now, if you choose B equals to one, you see that that, 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 that that satisfies, right? What about the next one? B not equals to C, we haven't assigned C since we considered uh, one variable at a time for backtracking. So we do not know this one, we do not check that one and we do not know this one as well. So that means, at a time, this been satisfied, constraints been satisfied, this one also constraint been satisfied. Now we can move to the next variable, the next variable C. Let's follow that order. The C is one, let's put the C to one. Now, check back again the constraints. The first one, yes, it stays there. A equals greater than B. Now B not equals to C, that violates, right? B equals to C here. We cannot go here. So cut that, do the backtracking. Now B equals to two. Oops, I'm sorry, um, there, there is a mistake. Um, if we cut that, then we go back here. That means B equals to one, but now C equals to two. If we put C equals to two, it also violates because A cannot be C. It cannot be equals to C. That also violates. So again, we cut that and we go again backtrack. So B equals to one, now C equals to three. So that satisfied our problem. So A equals to two, B equals to one, C equals to three. That is one solution that maybe that is not the, um, the only solution. There could be many more, but this is the one solution uh, that we use the backtracking and we found that. So A greater than B, B not equals to C and A not equals to C. That's a very good tutorial out there. If you take a look there, that's exactly the same thing I watched to learn this. So I, I, I provided like a step-by-step, you can, um, can take a look there. All right, so it could be like the, the, the Australian map coloring problem as well. Like this is, there is a no color that's empty. You remember like the first step initialization is empty. So we start with the coloring Western Australia with R, a red, green, or blue two, three different nodes options we have. If you go to DFS, 
So let's consider the left one first, then it can be expanded two more uh, ways. So you remember every time we expand some nodes, we check that the constraints satisfied or not. The constraints, two adjacent nodes cannot be the same. So nothing's been assigned. So we don't care about the adjacent nodes. So we start with the left one, just like the DFS. Then we color the, what is that? Uh, Northern Territory, maybe the Northern Territory. We color the Northern Territory with green or blue. We cannot color it red because it, it violates the constraints. The two adjacents are same. And we can only color the green or blue. So we have two options and so on. Like the, we color this one, the next one, as red, or we can color it blue. And so on, we, we can go forward. So to find the final solution. So if we see some things uh, like that, uh, if we go more, more clear, like the, if you put here, uh, maybe blue, then you can put here green, then what do you can put here? You can put red, that could be one solution. Or you can put here, you cannot put here blue, you cannot, what you can do? Uh, you can not put here green, you cannot put it here green, you cannot put red. So you cannot put anything here because red, green, blue, everything's adjacent here. So this, if you reach this one, it will be violating the constraints in the next step and it will do the backtracking here. If this, this choice has been made. Look at that, there is only two adjacent colors. So if that happens violating the constraints, it will, it will do the backtracking. It's just like the DFS, we, we already learned that. So as you see that, like the checks the constraints as you go, um, is it like the DFS search with two improvements, like the two improvements we are adding here. The, uh, here, you remember like the DF, DFS, like this is the recursion version of the DFS. I already shared with you the code. Uh, if the code is uh, not understandable, please let me know. Either I or um, someone from the graders, uh, they can talk about it in more details. So this is a depth first search in the recursion fun recursive function. So like the, um, if the current node is the goal, then you exit, otherwise, you mark that the current node is visited or in progress. Then you extract all the children of that particular node. And if one of them um, is uh, like the unvisited, you run depth for search again on that there until you make everything's visited. So once everything's visited out there, all the unvisited spin marked down, then uh, you mark that as visited. So th that is a recursion function functions of the, of the DFS. There's a two improvements out there. Um, I mentioned that two improvements. Let's talk about the two improvements out there. So one improvement is here, um, like that definitely this is the function, the fi final function, it could be DFS or anything. So this is a recursive backtracking where it is returned the solution or failure just like the, if the assignment is complete, then return assignment, just like the, uh, the previous condition, like the DFS. Now you select one of the unassigned variables, just like you select one of the children and um, you extract all of the children um, with the domain values. This particular order domain values, this, this actually provides um, whether it's, it's satisfied um, like the, all of the uh, constraints or not. So, so from one, one uh, like the possible, upgrade is here, it, these are just similar like the, uh, uh, like the death versus, you remember here, like the, this is we for each, and this is sim similar representation, like that. we check that goal here, we, we check that goal in this here, um, then again, we mark C as visited in progress, so we mark that 
uh, we can consider like the, the unassigned as visited and then, uh, sorry, then you go, if the unvisited, then the recursion. So here we add uh, one condition. First condition is, um, if value is consistent with the assignments and given the constraint, so it, it maintains the constraint or not. If it maintains the constraint, so you're gonna add that to the assignment, one more assignment, and then do the recursion. So that is one, uh, one additional value. So in the DFS here, here, if n is visited, you have to add if this visited, this visited node is constraints, is maintaining, is uh, abiding the constraint or not. That's the one addition. Then you go uh, the recursion. That's one modification that I add here. And the second one is if the result is not failure, then return the result. So if the results is going the recursion, recursion, recursions, and finally, is, is if it is not failure, then it will return the result. And if um, nothing's happening, if it is, um, it is uh, not, it is the result is not failure. Uh, the result, the result is failure. So you fail the result. That means you could not find um, like the, the solution in the recursion. So what you're going to do? You're going to remove all the responsible values that's creating this failure. So you remove the variables values from the assignments. Those are uh, like the reason for this failure. It's, 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 it's a very simple like that. You can consider it this way. Um, okay, let's, let's go back to the, the coloring problem here. So here, so we're, we're doing the backtracking at the very starting point. So we choose our GB grade. And the next, we choose, uh, we choose here green and we choose here um, blue. So now what is happening? While choosing the green and blue, we did not choose red again. This has been removed because this is violating, this is violating the constraints. We did not expand this node. This has been removed from this tree. And similarly, like that, if you go expansion a few more, and if you take a look there, we did not expand. Um, this, this is red, this is blue. We did not go for green here for this territory. It has been removed. We, we try that and we check that it's valid in the constraint. So he removed that. This, this silly operation has been done here. Here, check that a particular result is failed. Uh, sorry, um, this particular, uh, the, like the, this result is failed. Like the, if it is not failed, yes, it is successful. It, is, it will return the result. But one node, one particular node is failed because it's failed the constraint. Then we have to remove that value. That's exactly what we're doing. If the green is adjacent to the, like the nearby state, we will remove that from the assignment. Then we'll go this round and round. It's, it's, it's a, like a very simple, you can consider like the backtracking is a DFS plus variable ordering and fail on violation. So that's something, um, this is backtracking. Any questions? So still it is not the best um, best solution. So there is a lot of options of improving backtracking. Uh, one is the, uh, the ordering, which variable you should be assigned next. That's really important. And also like the, in what order should it values be tried? So that means like the, uh, whether you are gonna choose Western uh, Australia, then you're gonna choose the Northern Territory or you have to choose right after the, the Tasmania, I don't know. This ordering is really important. So if you consider, if you choose wisely these orders, sometimes it saves a lot of uh, time and uh, like the efforts. And also, which order you choose values? So you choose Western Australia 
as red, blue, or green, which, which order you have to choose. And if you choose Northern Territory, then now we, what do you have to choose? This, this order of the values is also important. So um, the question is, can we detect the, uh, like the failure early before we assign the value? Like the, if we assign red here, then if we assign blue here, can we predict that if we keep going like this, we'll be failed at one point? Um, if we could predict some ways, like the, like, like the evolution function, you remember like the, the others, is it this different name out there? So if we could evaluate the failure before it has been assigned, um, then it would be helpful. And also the structure, can we exploit the problem structure? So problem structure is really important because it's helpful for uh, your coding. You remember like that every time we code, we define a class with specific structure. That's why the problem structure is an um, uh, important part of any algorithm. So uh, the filtering first, Take a look in the filtering. The first thing is called forward checking. So the forward checking, you, you, you are always checking the forward. It's, it's very simple. That's exactly what we're doing. We're looking in the forward. We are not taking a look back after assignment, like we assigned Western Australia as blue, uh, as red. Then we are not taking a look into any other options. We are moving forward to the, uh, the forward ones and keep moving forward. So. The forward thinking people like kind of things. We are always checking the forwards and uh, maybe a few more steps forward to reach the goal. So uh, you can take a look there. Like the, we, we chose Western As Australia as red, then we are thinking forward. So we chose Western Australia as red. So not everything, is, uh, everything else has been discarded. So if you choose it is red, then we have only two options for Northern Territory, we have three options for Queensland, three options for uh, New South Wales, uh, like the uh, three options for um, a Victoria. But in the South uh, Australia, we have only two options. So if we choose Western, uh, like the Australia's rate. So we are thinking forward, like the, all other options. We are checking that what could be the all other options come considering the constraints. Then from, from one of them, we chose like that, this is the Queensland, we chose Queensland as green. So now you can take a look, the options are getting reduced. So, and also we are thinking forward. We already chosen Western As Australia and uh, Queensland. So we are not going to check it again because we are forward thinking people. We do not take a look back. So we are, we chosen whatever we chose, we chosen that. So, and we're thinking what we haven't chosen yet. What are the options out there? We have options of uh, Northern Territory as blue. You can take a look, there is a very few options out there if we chose green here. And forward, like that, from, uh, from options, from the, the here, the Victoria, we chose blue, oh, what happens? The Southern Australia is gone. There's no more options here. N none of the, uh, like the, like the here we can choose here, like that this is the Southern Australia. We cannot choose red, we cannot choose blue, we cannot choose green. So we're stuck here. So forward thinking, yes, forward checking is good, but it can be stuck someplace. So this is a very simple algorithm like the, you check one step ahead, like the check all the constraints. It's a very simple for checking like the, you check all the variables, you check how many variables are unassigned and you check each of the variables, what's the options out there and uh, whether they are inconsistent with the value or not. So it's very simple like the for loop. It's, it's nothing magic out there. Um, but, uh, if you do that, you will be stuck some point. So we have to impose some uh, propagation techniques. So we can apply some constraint propagation technique for this forward, th forward checking. It's also called forward checking propagations. Um, so we propagate information from assigned to unassigned variables, but does not provide early detection for all failures. It's, 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 a, it's a very simple like the, um, then, uh, here, in this case, you can consider 
the Northern Territory and Southern, uh, like the Australia, cannot be both blue. These both cannot be blue. If we propagate this ahead of time, probably we could uh, like the, avoid the failure. So why don't you detect that? So when you decide, when you check that forward for checking along with that, we are gonna check that whether uh, it propagates any information, it violates any um, any kind of uh, like the like that. We check that whether it is possible or not, but one step ahead, check one more time whether some of the options we have, that's also violating the constraints or not. So it's, it's like the, not one step, we are thinking two step forward. That that's con also can be considered as constant propagation. So what, or you can call, call it like the constraint to constraint. So we have some constraint, whether these constraints are constrained each other. So whether it's, is, is you know constraint is not like the appropriate word, but this is exactly what they call. You can consider like whether the constraints we generate, whether the options we generated, they're consistent with each other or not. So that's extra checking we are doing for constraint propagation, for filtering. So this this is called the consistency of A on the single arc. So uh, now. We are uh, going in a little bit different world. It's called arc. So, so far we talked about adjacency, like X is adjacent to Y, or you can consider Western Australia is adjacent to your Northern Territory. Um, yes, now we are ca calling the arc. That means any adjacent matrix could be Western Australia to Northern Territory or Northern Territory to Western Australia. The choosing order, you can consider the choosing order, which order you are choosing. So this one adjacency can be considered, this can, can, call, this, this can be called as arc. There's a two arcs for one adjacency. So the arc, con the consistency of a single arc is an important, like the arc consistency. We are gonna talk about AC3 algorithm as well. So you will see that the arc consistency algorithm um, in a while. So um, the, the, an arc like the X to Y, like the Western Australia to Northern Territory, this arc is consistent if for every X, like the every possible X in that tail, there is some Y in the head, which could be assigned without violating the constants. So, um, this, 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 uh, let's, let's take a look with uh, some example like that. It, it could be a little bit tricky. Like here, you can take a look. Oops. So one arc is called Northern Territory to Western Australia. So this is an arc. So if that arc is happening, so you consider that which like the particular values, uh, like the um, like the if for every x, here x is here, this is the every x. If for every x in the tail, there is some y in the head, which could be assigned without violating the constraints. So in that case, what, what is violating here? Here, um, here um, how can I choose a different color? This white color. So the red is violating here. So you have to remove red. This particular arc, red is violating. So you remove the red. Now this arc is consistent. Very simple. If you don't remove that, those, there's a one option that the, the arc is inconsistent. Similarly here, you can take a look there. Oh, you have to remove the red, then it is consistent. So delete from the tail, remember that. So two arc, one arc is consistent. Only if you delete all the possible suspects, you can, the suspicious, or you can you, you, the, confirm that there is, if the rate stays there, one point, one option is inconsistent. So you, you delete from tail. 
So while we are doing the forward checking, we have to force the checking or the arc to be consistent, each of the arc to be consistent as well. That is called the consistency of arc. And there is another algorithm called enforcing the consistency of arc. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, more, but that is a very simple, like whatever the name, whatever the complicated names they provide, uh, just bear with me and uh, keep in your mind, it's very simple. So this thing is going here. If something is overlapping, something is overlapping here, you delete that. But what happened here? If uh, like the, what about here? You don't care about this one. You only care about the tail. You don't care about the head. That exactly the, it says. So you delete from the tail, not from the head. That is our consistency. So um, these are more clear examples. I'm, I'm gonna provide you more uh, of like the, 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 like the simple example in a while. So uh, what are you doing? We're trying to generate some of the arcs and we are trying to find out whether they are consistent or not. So first, this is the one arc, like the V2 NSW, so Victoria to New South Wales. So what do you see? You see here, um, so a simple form of propagation makes sure all arcs are consistent. So why is still white? Pen color, red, all right. So this is the one arc and you can take a look there. If we choose, you're considering like the tail. If you choose red, is any anything's uh, possible in these options that is consistent? Yes, if you choose blue here. So red stays there. And if you choose green, yes, everything's possible. So it stays there. And blue, yes, we can choose red. So blue also there, so it is consistent. We do not need to delete anything because one of the options from there uh, provides us the, the solution. And similar here, like the, if you choose blue, any of those, options is out there that is consistent? Yes, the red, you can choose red. You don't care about the head for now. You remember like they only consider the tape for the our consistency. But what about this? Uh, red is consistent here for blue, but blue is not consistent here because there is a, there's only blue choice here. So we have to delete that. Now it is consistent, this arc is consistent. So delete from all tail. And now go back here. So what's the story is here? If you choose, if you delete something and you will see that there is a, uh, um, there is a new type of uh, NSW like that. We have a new option for NS, the New South Wales. So now we have to check everything one more time. So that means we have to go back to the previous arc one more time that we already checked. Now what is happening here? So now if we go here, the red, no, it's not consistent. We have to delete this. We delete that, now it is consistent. Then what about green? Yes, consistent. What about blue? Consistent. And again, and you can go there, oh, it's, it's violating things. So if you choose this, it's violating things. So if we could decide uh, this, this deletion, from the very beginning for this consistency checking, there will be no issue of this situation. Um, so we, in this way, we can actually avoid uh, failure. Um, so keep checking the arc consistency. So we, we're gonna talk about like the little more details. So how you're gonna generate the arc, how you're gonna check each of the arc and how you're gonna do the tree search and other things. So for now, I'm just defining what is arc consistency. So just bear with me. Two arc, they're consistent if the all the tails colors, all the tails values satisfies any of the head values. So that, that's, that's the, that's the uh, definition I'm, I'm actually providing you. So, so how are you gonna enforce the arc consistency in CSP? So this something is called um, the SC3 algorithm, uh, what the time is, oops. All right, give me, give me five more minutes. Um, Actually, you're totally fine uh, like that. 
to leave if you feel that five minutes is not enough. Um, since I promised, I'll finish up by nine o'clock. All right, so how are you gonna enforce the R consistency in CSP? So while you're doing CSP, CSP means you remember like that you are trying to find the value of all the variables, that's the CSP. So when you're trying to do that, how you're gonna force that it is consistent, like the, the arcs, every arc out there is consistent. So you have to first turn each binary constraint into two arcs. So if there is a binary constraint, like the constraint A not equals to B, or become, it, it will become A not equals to B and B not equals to A. So you have to extract that. So all the binary constraints and similar for the ternary or maybe multiple constraints, then you have to add all the arcs, all the arcs into, uh, into an agenda. So there could be an agenda. So the agenda means that's the, that's the node we have to visit or that's the arc we have to check whether it is consistent or not. That you can consider agenda is, is a list. You have to put agenda, this, this is the one arc, this is another arc. We are gonna check one by one whether they are consistent or not. Then there will be for loop. You're gonna check each of the agenda, each of the, uh, you can consider the agenda as a queue. You're gonna check each of the agenda. This is the starting point. So the starting point, you extract like the, all of the constraints and build the arcs and put all the arcs in the agenda. Don't, don't worry about right now the ordering. So let's, we, we're gonna talk about the ordering later. So, um, so we take one arc from the, from the agenda, the very first one. Let's consider the very first one. We take one arc that is XI and XJ, maybe NB, maybe Western Australia, Northern Territory, and take off that from the agenda and check it. So how are you gonna check it? Um, we're gonna check it whether it is consistent or not. So this arc is consistent or not. So that's why for every value of XI, there must be some value of XJ that fits the constraint. So the, the idea is xi arc xj. So whether th this is the tail, whether just like before we talked about whether there any uh, any value all of the values of um, xi is consistent some ways to xj. So th that's something actually we are we are going to check. If not, one of them is not consistent. One of the values is not consistent. Like that you choose red already and you saw that there is a something red already. So you need to delete that. If, if it is not like that, one of them are not consistent, you need to remove that. Just exactly what we did just in the previous slide. I just deleted some red because I saw that that is already in the head. That's the only option is the head. So now here's the catch. Now you changed the entire game. You changed a value, a variable value. So you have to do all the arcs again adjusting to that value. So if you change that, you have to check every other arcs that's uh, from the constraint that is happening here, that is pointing here. One more time, otherwise it will be mess. So, so if XI has changed, add all arcs to the agenda. So you add the agenda, the queue, all the arcs relevant to uh, X, we call it like the, the right-hand side X. So I'm, I'm gonna talk about what is right-hand side of, of the candidate. So uh, if we find XI being changed, find all the relevant, like the constraints out there where the XI is on the right side. That means all the relevant uh, arcs that is uh, in the agenda. So that's something we need to, add that and you repeat that again and again. You repeat, you again pop up uh, from the next arc from this, uh, from this, you know, like the, uh, the queue and go on that you can, you can actually do. So let, let, let's take it, take a very simple example, very, very simple example, but it will give you absolute clear idea what, what I'm gonna talk, what I'm talking about. This is the algorithm that we need to follow. So similarly, we have A, B and C three different variables with three different domain values. The constraint is A greater than B, B equals to C, two constraints we have. So at the very beginning, what we are going to do? We are going to add arcs. So we have arc, we have arc is uh, A greater than B. 
we have another R case, B less than A, just like you remember, we, we make all the arcs, like the A not equals to B, we are making it A not equals to B, B not equals to A, just like similar like this. A greater than B and B less than A. So that's, that's uh, that we are doing this arc. The order is important here. Then now B equals to C, we make it B equals to C and C equals to B. So this is our Q. Uh, this, this is our arcs, our all possible arcs here, the constraints. So now at the initialization, we put everything in the agenda. So we put everything in the agenda. The first step, we pop up the first, first one. And we check that if A greater than B, what is happening here? So um, A greater than B, we consider this one. So now check that if we choose A equals to one, there is a, no, there is a, there is no B that satisfies this one. So A equals to one, uh, one equals to uh, A, A equals to one, then there is none of the value satisfies this one. So A must be removed. So this, this has been traversed. This agenda has, this arc has been traversed. So there's one big problem is here. If we remove this one, then this arc is consistent. This is consistent. So we remove this, now it is consistent. So we visited this. So we remove that. So now this arc is consistent. It's been done. Now we change the value of A, right? So now what do we have to do here? Here, you can take a look there. If changed at all arcs related to A, that is on the right-hand side. So the right-hand side rule, the right-hand side rule, that means this is A, A that has been changed. Take a look in the arcs. Where's the right-hand side? There's a one right-hand side arc here. So R is right-hand side here. So let's insert that here. While trying to insert that, oh, we already saw that, it's already there. We do not need to do that. So there's no point of doing the same thing, same stuff twice. So we are not doing that. So we found that and uh, it's already there. Let's visit the next, next agenda. So next agenda is B less than A. So let's take a look at the B less than A. So here, uh, B to A, so where, uh, the tail is B. So we have to remove something from B to make it consistent. So B less than A. Here for one, yes, we found something. For two, we found something. For three, uh, no. There is a B, we have to remove three. Otherwise it's not uh, always less than A. That is exactly what we're doing. So we, have, we deleted three. Now here, the B changed again. Now right hand rule, right hand rule. Let's take a look back. So where is the right hand? Right hand, right hand. Here we found one B in the right hand. Here found B another right hand. So we choose this one. Oh, it's already there. We choose this one. It's already there. No, 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 no. We already we did traverse that one. It's not already there. We have to add it. We. That has been deleted, that's been deleted because it's been visited. Now we have to add again the same stuff. That is exactly what we're doing. Now again, do the same. For B equals to C, now the, we consider the B as tail. We have to remove something from B. So everything's consistent and so on. And move forward, forward, forward. Finally, we have a set of variables a new problem, this is a new problem. Previously we had one here, something, something. Now we have a new problem. We have variables, we have domains for each of them that is constrained and we force them that it is arc consistent. Each of them, whatever you do, CSP, you do DFS, you do whatever it is doing, it will, it will produce the arc consistency and it will show you, it will provide you good solution and you will not be stuck in Australia like this, like the, the Northern Territory and uh, uh, maybe New South Wales, both are one of the options, both of them is blue. You never be ending like this if you apply any kind of algorithms out there considering this, this world. That is called our arc consistency. So that is exactly what I, I expect, uh, like the, I explained, uh, these are in C the code format. This algorithm is called AC3. Uh, we had previous version of AC1, AC2, uh, 
let's avoid talking about those because nobody uses those in, anymore. So AC3 is this, this algorithm, just like exactly what I, I talked about. Uh, so there's some limitations. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about next class. So um, you have only two practices task. We haven't visited the practice three today. Um, so you do not need to submit practice 3.3, only submit the practice 3.1 and 3.2. So we are gonna start from the limitations of our consistency in the next class. Any questions so far? You know, it's really difficult to talk for two and a half hours, but, but it's, I'm, I'm fine. I'm used to it. So let me know if you have any questions. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna share the recordings. I recorded this class. So I'm gonna share with you um, the recordings in the Blackboard. So if you are uh, the volunteer students and non-graded non -grading students, please email me. I'm gonna share with you in Google Drive um, to avoid uh, like the, the consistency. So it should be, the arc should be consistent, you know. That, that's going from me to you. And uh, yes, uh, the, the, the practices to homeworks, everything you can submit until Thursday midnight. So it, it means everything uh, like the practices and other stuff. Any other questions? All right, all right. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm also tired too. Uh, but yes, when you feel better, ask me a question. And uh, I, I found two guys to put responsibilities. So take advantage of that. So ask them question. They are hired to answer your question. Yes, the, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add two practice tasks for today's 3.1 and 3.2 that you can find in the lecture. There will be two practice question submission for this week and uh, complete the homeworks. Uh, get the 60 out of 60. Why don't you get a bonus of 10? All right, then I'll see you next week. Take care until that time, stay safe. And let me know if you have any issues with them, any symptoms. One student already informed me um, Whatever, I, I, I actually suggested to stay home. Uh, some symptoms happen to one student. This, this, is, uh, this is really, really important. If you have any symptoms, please let me know. Your identity, your gender will be, stay with me, but I have to make, I have to accommodate your participation. So don't be hesitated letting me know. Um, I'll see you next week in the class. Until that time, take care. Bye for now.